that the intention of the appellant to opt for direct procurement was to avoid competition. The uncontroverted evidence on record discernible from the affidavit proposed by Mr. Ezra Chiloba dated the 27th of June 2017 provides the reasons why the appellant opted for direct procurement. At paragraph 6 it is deposed that out of abundance of caution the appellant sought legal advice on options available to it under the Procurement Act in view of the very limited time available to procure the election materials that the appellant was advised to consider proceeding by way of direct procurement. In our view, subject to satisfying the requirements for alternate procurement methods being the conditions stipulated in Section 103, 104 of the Act, direct procurement is constitutional. The trial court made a finding that there must be public participation before a decision to use direct procurement is made. Our reading of Section 103 and 104 and Articles 2 to 7, 1 does not impose a mandatory requirement for public participation prior to using or adopting or making the decision to adopt direct procurement. Section 103.2 does not provide for public participation as one of the conditions to be satisfied prior to adopting direct procurement. On this analysis, we make a finding that the trial court erred when it imposed a requirement for public participation prior to the appellant making the decision to adopt direct procurement method to procure election materials and ballot papers for presidential elections. So long as a procurement entity meets the threshold of section 103 and 104 and it observes the provisions in article 2 to 7, 1 of the Constitution, direct procurement cannot be unconstitutional. The conditions in these sections and articles are checks and balances that ensure transparency and accountability in direct procurement. Other provisions safeguarding accountability and transparency to the public in relation to direct procurement include Article 35 of the Constitution on access to information, the role of the Auditor General, the role of the Ombudsman, and the supervisory powers of the High Court. The progressive reduction of the scope and degree of competitiveness in alternative methods of procurement, amongst other reasons, lead us to find that public participation is not a mandatory requirement prior to a procuring entity making the decision to opt for direct procurement. An issue that was urged in this appeal at ground nine in the memorandum of appeal was that the High Court erred in compelling the appellant to come up with a framework for public participation when it stated the paragraph 200 of the judgment that quote the IEBC was obliged to craft and implement a meaningful program of public participation and stakeholder engagement in the process of tendering for the printing of election materials and ballot papers. scope and threshold for public participation. We have considered this of the provisions of Article 10.2 of the Constitution and other relevant articles where public participation is constitutionally required. In our considered view, the absence of a legal framework for public participation is not an excuse for a procuring entity or a state organ to fail to undertake public participation, if required by the Constitution or law. A state organ or procuring entity is expected to constitutional principles relating to public participation in a manner that is and preserve the Constitution. The Senate is aware of the need for a legal and to fulfill this need, the Public Participation Bill 2016, Kenya Gazette number 75, number 15, has published the preemptive states that
quote, it is an act of parliament to provide a general framework for effective public participation to give effect to the constitutional uh, provisions, unquote.